So once again, the anime, in my opinion, the studio Toei Animation hit a home run with this episode of One Piece. Also, the opening that we got right now, One Dream. Yeah, you better get that in your heads and memorize it and replay it for the next week because it's going to be the last time you hear it because as of next week, the, I'm sure a lot of you know this already, but just to clarify, in episode 935, we get a brand new opening. Opening 23, is, ironically, it's called Dreaming On. And the group is by, is by a group called Die Ice. So curious what, what we're going to get. I haven't heard the song yet. I know it's out. But I want to watch it as the song unfolds and as the visuals unfold, which I'll get to by the end of the review. But let's get into the meat of this episode, which really was Kamaso versus Zoro. And right away, I love how it's set up, like with Zoro and Kamaso, the classic stare down. But what made this interesting is like you have the red tint background, which I thought was kind of neat. A neat touch to add the atmosphere because was about to go down some pretty monstrous shit. So. Gukimaru looking on. We have Kamara Saki, who's returned from the dead to like the previous episode was, even though the pace was kind of like iffy. But even so, like certain things, like I, one thing I said that's been constant throughout this entire one of anime has been the attention to detail. Like there's certain things they've added that the manga hasn't because of time constraints on the part of it. At least that's where I've come from. So when we get the backstory about Ryuma, like we got last week, where he sliced the dragon in half. By the way, the parallels with Zoro also, since he did the same thing in Punk Hazard. So I like the attention to detail. Also, the mentions of the Black Blades with the hockey and how important it was with the conversation we had after dress, during Dress Rosa in a flashback after Zoro dealt with Pika from Mihawk. And that's going to be crucial of what's, the, what's about to come when it comes to Zoro. Attention to the detail actually made up what was a pretty enjoyable episode this episode was a hell of a lot better though for the main reasons one it focused on more aspects and actually got the plot moving along and did it in so, such an enjoyable way and by the way speaking of Ryuma I, I can't be the only one that thinks thinks this but the the clash the way they charged against one another kind of remind me of Ryuma versus Zoro from Thriller Park exactly with Kamazu and Zoro how they approached each other in this episode that just gave me those same vibes we shift off to Udon Prison with Loot B, and uh, he's making sport of obviously the be Beast Pirates on the Queen, I guess the Pleasures and the Gifters, which, I mean, no surprise. He's obviously training himself to control his hockey better. And, and I think they, they highlighted that in the previous episode, but it took way too long, in my opinion. That's why I appreciated this episode a little bit better, because they added something, an element that they did not add. I don't think he added it during the manga, but it made it crystal clear in the anime. Like, about it, it's Luffy who's calling out Queen's like, yo, give me a tougher opponent, like, seriously. I want to train. So, I give you a tougher opponent. And uh, here I go, being there, that's going to be so influential. Luffy grasping this hockey, because there's no reason why it's here I go paired with Luffy and, ha and having Shinobu in the bathhouse, hyping him up as she did. There's no reason for it if it's not going to play a factor, and it's definitely going to play a factor soon, especially with the next episode. He gets the green Teletubby from hell, and he does punch him, but he doesn't seem to have any effect. And Luffy recognizes, oh, you're pretty tough, but you're not as tough as Kaido. So gives the opportunity to Luffy to hockey up. So what try to use the same level of hockey that Rayleigh used pre-time skip when he's showing Luffy the hockey for the first time, arm and hockey. He blew the elephant away without actually touching it. He still, he still can't get a grasp of it. And there's another thing, like obviously hockey blooms during the heat of battle, so Luffy needs to be pushed in order for this to work, or he needs to be coached. But Luffy hockeys up, he uses he tries to use the same type of hockey, but if you notice, after he hockeys up, you see the red aura around his arm. That's gonna be so influential and it kind of where they go with this. I like the design already, because it, it kind of makes sense of why his aura was red. When he was fighting Kaido, and I mentioned this already, when he was fighting Kaido in the anime, I said it could be a connection, and lo and behold, look what happens. That's pretty cool. I, again, attention to detail, I like it. Anime fans and anime early fans are not going to know what the hell that's all about, but you're going to find out pretty soon. While this is going on, we also have Kira Shiro, who's being hassled by Komurasaki fan club because obviously he killed her, quote unquote. 
So they're under the belief of that. So he's under persecution, especially from Orochi. So I'm wondering that's not really if it's going to lead to anything because Orochi was pissed. He was crying, but then he was pissed. It looked like he also transformed, griefing over Comrade Saki. But also he notices the symbol has been leaked out, like the the Crescent Moon symbol that's going to spark the rebellion on the night of the five festivals. So now Orochi's going to be on the red alert. So we go to where Inuyasha is meeting up with Kinemon, and it's it's pretty bad because now Orochi is aware the symbols got leaked out. So the question is who are, who leaked it out to him? So that, that, that has to be addressed. And we also see Yasu looking at this symbol, and obviously he pays a visit to the Straw Hats and the Alliance, so that's going to play a factor, considering the fact that he was already with Zoro. So that's going to play a huge role. That's taking place. We have a back and forth between Law and Shinobu because obviously Shinobu was like questioning like Beppo because he's got captured by got he's been captured so he's Shinobu is sort of freaking out because obviously worried that he, he, Beppo's gonna spill the bean. Law gets triggered by this because like no that's not gonna happen no matter what. So that's cool on the part of Law. I don't know if the fan base of Law is gonna take kindly to Shinobu in the anime only department because. Law is a popular character, and when push comes to shove, he's pretty lo loyal when it comes to the straw hat. So the fact that Shinobu questioned Law or any member of his crew for that matter is like, yeah, that's not going to go well. It didn't go well in the manga, I can tell you that. So it took a while for them to actually get accustomed to Shinobu. So yeah, he was telling you that he's going to explain more, and the plot's going to roll along, and obviously he's going to play a huge role with the Komurasaki funeral. It's about to take place in a couple of days. Obviously, it's being postponed because of the chaos. And speaking of Komurasaki, we go to where she's observing Zoro versus Kamazu. That's the main event, the main attraction of this episode. And boy, did it, it was short, but it, it delivered. It was definitely sweet. Having somewhat of difficulty, I have to admit, like Zoro was being tested by Kamazu the killer to the point where he actually took a huge hit. But that was only because obviously he's trying to fend off not only Kamazu the killer but also Gushimaru. So that's I like how he did that in the previous episode where he blocked both of them like a badass like he is. But here he kind of like cut him off guard, and that's how Kamazu has able to get a major hit on Zoro. Like damn, like but the endurance and the durability of Zoro we know from Thriller Bark is insane. So he took that like a boss. He actually got stuck in his shoulder, so I don't think it took it. hit any battle organs. Used that to his advantage because Kamazu was like, "Oh, I can't get free." And so he takes this scythe out of his chest, out of his shoulder, and he uses it as his own for the three sword style Santoriu. And I love, I obviously Purgatory Onigiri, but man, they did deliver it on that attack with, with the art style and the animation. Like hit, hit they nailed it. And obviously, a KO, one hit KO, Kamazu the killer. After that, Gukimaru dips because Zoro is kind of like weakened by the Kamazu's attack. But he's, he, by the end of the episode, he passed out. So I know in the manga, when this hit happened in the manga, a lot of people were pissed because what the hell? Zoro, he won, but he te one thing that's going to be very interesting is like how people who don't, the One Piece fans who don't read the manga, I'm curious what they're going to think about this because. The manga fans were salty, like Zoro, the hardcore Zoro fans were salty as hell. I can tell you that from experience. Like, what the hell's going on? This shouldn't happen. But anyway, you, when it gets revealed, spoiler alert, because we're going to find out his identity pretty soon. When it gets revealed who he is, that's going to blow a lot of people's minds. That's pretty much how the episode ends. I, I enjoyed it from start to finish. Obviously, to certain areas, they shifted back and forth. Obviously, they start with the Kamazu versus Zoro fight and they ended with it, but the back and forth is pretty decent because it moved the plot along, which is what it should do. I don't know if people are going to agree, but I thought it was an enjoyable episode as, as a whole. And obviously, like like I said, next week we're going to a new opening, so that's going to open up a lot of eyes for a number of different reasons. Um, I'm guessing the people, One Piece fans in the community, are going to make a wager, see how many spoilers from the manga they're going to add in. I don't really care all that much as long as they song fits the visuals and the visuals are good because the opening spoiler heavy or not this is a pretty darn good opening so it's going to be a hard one to follow with what's to come this should go without saying i i'm pretty sure 
that they're going to throw in a teaser or two about the full appearance, or maybe the somewhat of the appearance of Kazuki Odin, considering we're close to one at three. It's this point in one at two where re things really pick up. I'm also curious about the eye catches if they're going to change. And I know a lot of people are like, what's going on here? Why just Luffy and Zoro? Why don't they have the rest of the straws? Maybe they will, but I think like this isn't done out of spite like, to like highlight the two most popular straw hats. No, this this is done for a reason. I've said this for the, the attention to the detail, and I truly believe that Oda has a hand in what goes on in the anime, like revealing too much and revealing what not to reveal. But the eye catches like highlighting Zoro and Luffy on. They're going to be two player, main players in the battle against Kaido. Now, that's not to say that Zoro's going to be the one to kill Kaido. No. But he's going to have, definitely have a hand in it. And that's why both of them are to get a, a significant power boost. Luffy, specifically. And the, another reason why I think Zoro's going to be a main player. It literally teases that there's going to be a major reveal about Komurasaki's identity. It's going to be revealed to Zoro and Zoro first, before anybody else. It's not done for... It's not done by random. Like there's gonna be a reason for it later down the road. And I, I guessing some of the anime only might know who her parents who her identity might be, but obviously it's gonna be revealed next week. So and not only I guess technically Zoro did get a win. I mean one did one hit KO Hammers of the Killer and spoiler alert, Zoro's gonna get another major win, but not not involving any fights. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Let me know what you guys think down below. That's going to do it today, guys. If you enjoyed the view, give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. It helps the channel out greatly. Subscribe to the channel for more One Piece, and I'll catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.